Here we are in the Davis Mountains, elevation 5,600 feet, volcanic substrate. Got a handful of cool stuff going off right here. We got this native uh, Astrolepis fern, a, a xeric adapted fern, member of uh, the Chylanthoid subfamily, Chylanthoidae, and the family Pteridaceae. We got the uh, Echinocereus, Echinocereus coccinius going off right there. And then right over there, we got our native Echeveria. The genus is mostly in Mexico, only got one or two species in the United States, maybe two or three. You can see they're flowering right there, pollinated by hummingbirds, maybe butterflies too. We got a red tube flower. You can actually root those things just from the leaves, like many members of the family. Crassolaceae is the family. You can see they're happy as a pig and shit, growing in the shade of this oak. These mountains have been really dry. I was here five months ago. It's almost bone dry, a lot of tree mortality, a lot of dead pines, a lot of dead oaks. Everything's happy right now. Doing very well. Oh, we got a native buckwheat, native eriogonum. Oh, this is nice. This is the first time this has flowed in how long? Six months, a year? Fucking long time. Wonderful exposure of rhyolite. Bunch of cool mosses, some liverworts back there. Canlanthoid ferns everywhere. Look at the fuzzy shits, the fuzzy ferns. And then we got Femoranthus right here. Order Caryophyllales, same family as Bitterroot, Matiaceae. And it's succulent, just like cacti, which are in the same order. And this flower will be a hot pink, very conspicuous. Look at those liverworts too, those aqua, aquamarine liverworts, non-vascular plants. Bunch of good shit. More Femoranthus. Little swollen fingers. See, we got some more dying pines over there. How old is that ponderosa? Victim of the drought. But we got oaks and we got Mullenbergia and Hymeri. I think that's what that is down there. And uh, and then on the rocky knobs, got all kinds of cool shit. And the cool Echinocereus cacti. And of course, more Echeveria strictiflora you could see over there. What a rich sight. Look at this Myriopteris. Look at that silver fern, silver fuzzy ferns. These could be hard to grow from spore, but they're worth trying. I'm gonna collect a specimen of this for the herbarium. Look at that, look at all the scales and trichomes. Xeric adapted ferns. Roos over there, Roos aromatica. Got a massive yucca. Tons of that mimosa everywhere with the white flowers. I wasn't even going to film today, but so this is pretty jazz. Look at Jimmy. Jimmy's not being a pain in the ass. Good for him. He's only six months old. Look at this femoranthus. Holy shit. The thing's, it's, man, it's, it's stuff is just starting to flower. Got our friend Selaginella everywhere, everywhere. More Teridaceae. Forget the genus. Got to look that up later. I've observed it before. <clears throat> we got that uh, Malpigiaceous thing. Opposite leaves. Strigos hairs. And Malpigiaceae flowers when it's going off. We got Echeveria strictiflora. Ooh, we got an Aloysia? Or what is that? Or is that a Salvia? It looks like Aloysia right there. Yeah, just a little bit too early for uh, flowers yet. The mimosa is going off. You see how the, the spines are at the nodes. Instead of in between, like the genus Senegalia, those recurved cat claw spines are at the nodes, the leaf nodes. More Echeveria going off over there. Super easy to grow from seed in a mineral mix with humidity, and you can also root cuttings just from the basal leaves. Yeah, look at that. It's a dead oak coming back from the base. Whole thing is mostly dead. A lot of stuff got the shit kicked out of it by the drought out here. Oh, one of my favorite oaks. You get this in Arizona too, on Skylands in Arizona. Quercus hypoleucoides. Look at that beautiful white underside. Look at those scales on the leaves as well. They can get large here. I'm surprised they're even growing here, though. It looks like a, there's quite a few dead ones. Look, there's four dead ones. Jesus. Yeah, it was really looking rough last time I was here, man. Now it's looking pretty good. There we go. There's Now you're starting to see the madrones. Beautiful madrones. What's that prunus serotina over there? But again, these aren't like riparian trees. It's just this creek has been dry for so long. God, it looks rough, man. Look at all the dead trees. Dead trees. Bed pine. It's nice to see the forest recovering. You look up there, you can see all tons of tons of cool shit. It's all volcanic, it's all rhyolite. 
junipers, even some pines, Pinus sombrides, Pinus ponderosa. But stuff, you know, it was a bad drought for a long time. Stuff is just coming back. We got this cool little species of Frolichia down here. Amaranthaceae. The flowers aren't showy. They're not showy shit, but it's got a it's got a spot in the living machine. It's a cool species. It's a, it's a cog in the living machine worth worth documenting. God, it's so green. We got Bovardia going off. Coffee family. Ruby AC. Look at those red flowers. Hummingbird pollinated. Four lobed little red tubes. Is that not more common in cultivation? Look at that thing. Apparently made it through the drought fine. Yeah, we got a Pelea species, another chylanthoid fern. Look at that beautiful blue. Wish these were more common. Probably need some sort of mycorrhizal host, and they're hard to germinate from spore. You got to germinate them in pure perlite, microwave it to sterilize it, then put the spores in, wait six months, and pot them up. Get this oak too. It's like a Quercus hypoluca, but it's got those white undersides, but then it's got lobed leaves, which Hypoleucoides, I've only seen it with simple leaves. I wonder if this is some sort of hybrid or something or what. The mushroom diversity of the Davis Mounds is part of the reason I wanted to come out here after this rain. This looks like an Amanita, which is mycorrhizal, and it is coming up beneath the oaks. So, you gotta get Alan out here. Look at that. What's up there on that, that cliff? Probably a bunch of cool stuff. This could be an agaricus too, I suppose. I don't really fucking know. I'm not a mycologist. God damn it, Jim. Hey, look at how green that looks. All that rhyolite, all that greenery, all those oaks, pines, madrones, and the really wet, shady sites. Up here at the base of the rocks, we got a composite that actually smells pretty good. I wonder if it's a Berkelia or what. Kind of looks like a Berkelia. Stevia tribe, Eupatori. Actually, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, no, it could be multi series phyleries. Multiple series of phyleries. Very glandular. Smells great. And then we got something in Brassicaceae. Flowers aren't open yet, but those are those are mustard flowers. Those sepals are mustard sepals. They're kind of cupped. Purple flowers when it comes up. And then linear leaves. Don't. Hey, hey, stop. Oh, you're eating the grass. I thought he was eating the mustard. Oh, we got that brassica. We got that mustard and flower. Yeah, four petals. Those little cupped four green sepals at the base. And if you were to look inside there, you'd see six stamens. Four petals, four sepals, six stamens. Rubbery linear leaves. This is cool to see right here. We got mortars. We got more taros. These are obviously... Someone was grinding, grinding acorns, grinding acorn flour. Yeah, we got and then we got a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of more taros in there. A bunch of grinding bowls. Holy shit, that's cool. Wow. How old? Cool. God, how it. old? Yeah. These fire scars on the, no, not really. Must have been a nice place to live. And that creek down behind us was probably year round. Yeah, a little flat spot to set up. God. Yeah, this little nice divot. I bet there's lithic materials all throughout all this stuff. How old? God, that's nice to think about, man. I used to think about people living here before all the fucking buckies and strip malls. <laughs> it was before the polio vaccine, too. I don't know. Did they have polio in North America? They had syphilis. I think they had polio. Must have been a nice place to live. Really nice. They're fucking wonderful up there. So we got Mirandia up there with the purple flowers. Snapdragon vine is the common name. Family's Plantaginaceae. Another plant that's not planted enough in, in, uh, within the boundaries of human infrastructure in Texas. Then we got a Nicotiana species. Sticky glandular leaves and white moth pollinated flowers. Actually, those might be bees. They don't look too tubular. Bees might hit that too, but certainly moths as well. A very sticky, very sticky plant. So this, this is all mimosa, and it looks like it's been selected for by the drought because it thrives on little water compared to the oaks and the pines. 
and it's also got nitrogen fixing bacteria in the roots so it's probably been thriving probably doing much better there's probably a lot more of it here than there may have been 40 50 years ago during a wetter time because we just came out of that drought for it's been like one prolonged mega drought basically for a, like a decade or two decade and a half what the hell is this look at this little legume the glaucus those veins look nice what is this it's like it's been having a hard time a little seedling coming up in the duff I just got play that glock those glaucus veins I wonder if this is a uh, lucana that can grow into a large tree but those are just little seedlings look at the alligator juniper you can see why they call it alligator juniper look at that bark Yeah, this is Lucana retusa, golden ball lead tree. It's kind of a weird common name, but it works, I guess. The inflorescences look like little, little yellow poof balls. It's a mimosoid. I've never actually seen I didn't know it was in the Davis Mountains, though. That's Lugnania speciosa, too. Look at that. Yeah, we got a cool little sedum right here. Another crassolaceous bastard. And more here. Oh, that garter, that garter snake uh, must me stinks a little bit. This whole beautiful exposure of rhyolite, and the sedum's growing way at the bottom. It's just been so dry. I wonder if there's any left up there. Probably were 10 years ago. Oh yeah, look, there's a little one, little guy. Look at that, that guy's getting loaded up. He's about to explode. He's just totally inflated. Cactus roots just, just suck up water like a dry sponge. Ungnadia speciosa, Mexican buckeye. It's another great plant for uh, cultivation. That's a feral donkey's though. It's the donkey shit. They just destroy, destroy veg. If someone's probably gonna call them at some point. Then I would, uh, I wouldn't fault them. God, this is such a great exposure, man. Look at that. Oh, here's a cool one. Family is Ramnesi, genus is Adolphia. Adolphia infesta. Tiny white flowers, five petals, photosynthetic stems, and uh, leaves that are barely worth mentioning. And here it is in flower. There's a happier and healthier golden balls lead tree, Lucana retusa. Look at it. It's crazy, man. There's only three or four of them. Got seedlings everywhere, too. Just saw a little seedling down there. The new growth is. It's like a glaucous blue. See that? I don't know if you can see it right there. It's kind of a shitty. Can't get a good uh, view. Got this dahlia too. Yellow elongated keels on those pea flowers. Then there's those fuzzy calices like all the dahlia species have. Kind of chalky mint green leaves. Hey, look at all the dead pondies. All the dead ponderosa. It's crazy, man. There's so many more dead ones down that way too down slope so this is definitely this drought has changed the landscape changed the floristic composition this is a cool little mushroom we found it's poking out nice texture a little rhizomorph obviously probably dries out and then disperses the spores that way it gets stepped on some pretty interesting though i wonder if it's mycorrhizal with any of these oaks or pines there we go, this is a cool one. This is a rare one, Mandevilla hypoluca, because it's got those white undersides to the leaves. And of course, moth pollinated flowers that smell kind of like jasmine here at 5,800 feet in the Davis Mountains. This is not a common species. Look at a Bovardia, look at a Bovardia going off nice. Look, Jimmy's calmed the fuck down, that's nice. You never see him calm. Rhyolite everywhere. I'd love to see this being grown. <clears throat> I don't have any bags for cuttings, unfortunately, so I have to just come back and try and get seed. A lot of cool Mandevilla species in, in Texas.
This is a, again, very rare one, Sky Island one. So the land's been looking pretty burnt out just from drought and then the donkeys. There's way too many donkeys as you can see right there. But uh, we did find this massive cactus. Looks like Escobaria vivipara or some sort of Coryphantha. I guess it's just an Escobaria. They can get this big, but those tubercles are juicy as hell, man. Look at that. I'm flowering out of the flowers out of the top, and then the fruits are not ready yet. Yeah, they'll be pushed out as they mature. I'll probably turn red or something. But impressive though. Look at that. There you go. There's Mandevilla hypoluca again. Just coming, probably just coming back from the root. It's got to take some juice to get that thing to flower. There's another one right there. So the the tops probably just died in the drought. Yeah, looks like it looks like that's what happened. There's probably like a massive root system down there. But it takes a lot of carbohydrates for those to produce those flowers. And so it's probably got a massive root buried in the ground. Or, you know, bigger than you would expect. The foliage has all died. That's cool. Here's Mandevilla macrosiphon, too. So you got Hypoluca and macrosiphon. Apparently they're not hybridizing, though. Macrosiphon has much bigger leaves. Look at those ovate leaves. And they're not as white on the underside. It's starting to piss. It's cool. I'm growing St. Patrick. Look at this. Nice hamato cactus. Hematocanthus, sometimes called ferro cactus, but it's not. Hooked spines. This is the West Texas ecotype, which looks so... You're going to learn real quick what a spine is. But the uh, it's a much different ecotype than the uh, South Texas one. They got South Texas's variety or subspecies sinuatus. Look at that, though. Much longer spines on this one, too. And Asclepius numularia. With those very tomentose leaves. Almost aquamarine. Doesn't get too tall. It's about the tallest they get. Yeah, this is another nice one. Mammillaria myacantha. Looks like hydri, but the tubercles are a bit more swollen. It grows in a completely different habitat. Probably closely related. Flowers look different, too. But I don't see anybody growing those. Nobody appreciates the natives. They always want something from the other side of the uh, other side of the equator or somewhere exotic.